Hi, I'm Kressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how the lead screw, the apron, and the split nut work for the lathe project that I'm making. The lead screw is the part that mounts on the front of the lathe and it gives the operator the ability to move the carriage along the length of the bed. The apron, the square part there, is the part that attaches to the carriage assembly and on it is mounted the split nut. The split nut allows the operator to engage or disengage the lead screw so that that way uh, you can move the carriage along the bed by hand. The lead screw has journals on either end, so it's a threaded rod that's mounted in, in bearings. This is the pattern that I use to cast the bearings, and when I put it in the sand mold and took it out, it leaves a little channel where you put a piece of steel rod, and then when you close up the pattern, the steel rod forms a little void and you can just knock it out of the metal pieces. You're left with these aluminum pieces that form clamps, if you will, for the journals on the lead screw. The lead screw journals were a little hard to fabricate. The book was written back in the 80s when different materials were available at the hardware store. Uh, what I decided to go with was a steel tube it turns out that's actually a pretty good fit uh, between the threaded rod and the inner diameter of the tube. However, I realized that the tube was actually like spot on half an inch, so 500 thousandths. Uh, the rod that I use to cast my bearings is slightly undersized. It's uh, enough of a difference that I really kind of had to scratch my head as far as what's the best way to make the journals for the lead screw. I put the tube into these clamps, held them in my vise, and then I used a rubber hose to attach the tube to the motor that I had for the uh, for this project. Turned on the motor to get the tube spinning. I just dropped in some oil in the top of these bearings uh, to kind of keep them from getting too hot and it worked pretty well. They got warm but it was fine. Um, and then I used a file uh, angle grinder to help me get that diameter down the handful of thousands of an inch that I needed to be able to slip into the bearings that I had cast. Once I had the outer diameter of the tube properly sized, I just epoxied the lead screw into the journal on the end with the crank. On the other end, you need to be able to get it off uh, to unscrew the lead screw from the journal, and that's so that you can remove this temporary coupling. I ended up uh, just welding a nut onto the journal for the headstock end of the lead screw. I just use a second nut to tighten up against the journal and that way it's a solid assembly and I can get this coupling off when I need to. The apron is just a square piece of cast aluminum. Then I mounted it onto the base of the carriage. I had the lead screw assembled onto the lathe bed and that's allowed me to create the pattern for the split nut. I drilled a hole in the carriage at the same level as the lead screw, and then I used just wood filler. Um, I sprayed oil or something onto the lead screw to keep the wood filler from sticking to the lead screw. And once it set up, I was able to uh, finish the pattern that way. That gives you good alignment between the split nut that gets cast and the lead screw. For casting the split nut, you end up using not only a rod that's inserted into the cope of the mold, that's the top part of the mold, you also end up cutting a short segment of threaded rod to fit down into the pattern. When you pour the metal into the mold cavity, the threaded rod is cast into the split nut. I just used a hacksaw and I cut and filed the split nut part down until I was able to knock out the steel threaded rod. 
and that left really nice threads in the split nut. I had to fabricate a little detent lever to allow the operator to lock it into an engaged or disengaged position. I fabricated this mechanism to hold the motor and allow me to uh, relax the tension on the belt for changing the ratio of the step pulleys and I fabricated it pretty much per the plans in the book. Uh, it's mostly welded with the exception of the hinges are actually pop rivets. There's a large pulley on this intermediary shaft and the motor has a small pulley that really takes it down from something like 1800 RPM on the motor, something slightly less, to a spindle speed of uh, approximately 600 RPM. In the next video, I'm going to be working on the headstock and that'll involve uh, mounting up a temporary headstock, if you will, to hold a shaft that will bore the hole through the permanent headstock. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you like the video, click the like button. Subscribe to Maker Size. Check out some of our other videos. We'll see you next time.